Welcome to PGS Maths. In this video, we'll be looking at an introduction to multiplying and expanding brackets. So as a quick recap, let's have a look at multiplying with letters. I'm going to use this rectangle, which is split into two parts, to show how brackets can be used to simplify some of our calculations. Let's first, let's do it the long way. I've got two rectangles, so to find out the area of each of those, a red rectangle can be represented by 3 times x, which is 3x. And the orange rectangle, well the height's still 3, so 3 times 2 is 6. So if I put those two together, what I end up with is 3x add 6. And that's the area of my rectangle. So why would we need to use brackets in this situation? Well, we could have done this as a single calculation. The total width for the whole rectangle can be given as x plus 2. Let's just add those two values together to start off with. So to find the area for the whole shape, we're going to have 3, and we're going to multiply it by x plus 2. Remembering that we don't need to write a multiply symbol between two parts of an expression in algebra. So we've got 3, and we're going to multiply by the whole bracket. The reason I use brackets around this is that otherwise it would just be 3 times x according to our orders of operation. Now we've already seen then that the answer has to be 3x plus 6. But how does that happen? Surely 3 times x is just 3x, but then we need to multiply the 2 as well. So this gives us a rule when dealing with brackets. Everything inside the bracket is multiplied by everything outside the bracket. It's the most important thing to remember when dealing with brackets, whether this is in algebra or in pure numeracy. So let's have a look at this example, 8 times y plus 3. Now I said times, but there's brackets there and no multiply symbol. That's because we know that the y plus 3 has to be together, so the brackets are put around it. We also know that there's a multiply symbol missing between the number and the bracket. It's implied. You should always remember that that means multiply, but it doesn't mean just 8 times y, it's 8 times the bracket. Now one thing that can help us is to use a multiplication grid to help us with this. You don't have to, it's just one method that works and is very easy to use each time. The number outside the bracket, 8, We'll go down the side, and the values in our brackets, well I've got y, and I've got 3. Now it's a positive 3, plus 3, so I don't have to worry about anything negative at this stage. Now all we need to do is to multiply the two values to work out what each of these cells in the table would represent. 8 times y is 8y. 8 times 3 is 24. So by adding those two together, you can see that by expanding our bracket, the solution is 8y plus 24. The table just helps us to remember to multiply everything by everything. Let's try a couple more complicated examples but showing how the same method can be applied to each of them. I'm going to use the same grid. This time outside my bracket is negative 2. Inside the bracket I have 3g. And next is a takeaway 4. So this is a negative 4. This table is really easy for helping us to remember that it is a negative value. 
So let's work out what each of these values is. If you want to pause here and have a go yourself, it's a good opportunity. Okay, so we have negative 2 times 3g. We'll multiply your numbers together first. 2 times 3 is 6, so that must be a negative 6. And don't forget the g. In the next cell, we have negative 2 times negative 4. Well, 2 times 4 is 8. Negative times negative is positive. So my answer for this, when fully expanded, can be written as negative 6g add 8. To tidy this up a little bit, you can reverse that and just have 8 take away 6g but either is an acceptable answer. So what happens if we put a letter outside the bracket or a number first? Does it change our method? Well, not at all. Outside the bracket is an A. Inside my bracket I have a 3 and a negative B. A times 3, that's 3A. A times negative B, it's going to be negative AB or negative BA, meaning that my final answer here, if I put those together, is 3A subtract AB. As long as you follow those three simple steps, you can multiply anything that's in a single bracket. So have a go at today's challenge. There's a few more parts to this, but it follows the exact same method. Wallace tries to simplify the following expression. 2a multiplied by a plus b plus 3. So what's wrong with the answer? 2aa plus b plus 6. Post your answers in the comments section below. Remember to subscribe for future videos, send us a message at PGS Maths on Twitter or on Facebook forward slash PGS Maths if you have any questions, queries or requests for future videos.